You may have seen her at her weekly show, Lasers in the Jungle, at UCB. You may have seen her on Broad City. Please give it up for Katina Correo! And I'm just so happy uh, that I get to live in New York. It's like such a gift. Mainly because when you live in New York, you don't have to drive. And I'm a terrible driver. Like, a terrible driver. It took me seven times to get my license. Seven tries, yes. <laughs> I know. Well, the thing is, I didn't really, like, know how to follow the signs, you know, like, stop and do not enter. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> um, so, uh, but then, like, once I looked at the signs and I realized that they were there to help me, I passed my driver's te test with flying colors. <laughs> well, I passed, you know, not with flying colors. My grandfather had to be like, please, you know. <laughs> so, anyway, it's not part of it. Um, but, <laughs> but since then, signs have become a huge part of how I live my life. Not just traffic signs, but other signs. The signs that I'm referring to are signs that I get from the other side. Now, I know, I'm not a medium or anything. Uh, as a matter of fact, the way I retain water, I'm always a large. <laughs> but um, <laughs> in there, I was like, put joke. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, um, but, but I, I literally do feel that I, I get signs from the other side. And um, if you don't mind, I'd love to share them with you. Uh, the first one um, came from my best friend in the whole entire world, Lisa. Lisa and I were roommates in college. And she just was, like, I had three roommates in college, but when I met her, I was like, there she is, there's my best friend. She's just, she was so outgoing and great and she put up with me because she was a graphic designer so I'd call her in the middle of the night and I'm like, I need a flyer for my show. Like she was great and really awesome. So when we graduated from college, she and her husband lived on Long Island. So that was awesome because we were able to still keep in touch. She went to school in Pennsylvania. We were able to still keep in touch and, and do all these great things. So for our 30th birthday, we planned a trip to um, South Beach, Miami. And it was really exciting because like we aren't South Beach people, you know, with the white bathing suits and you know, the pizzazz. <laughs> but we're like in the other line at Denny's, but the, you know, <laughs> let's just do it. And it was so awesome because we had like a great hotel deal and everything seemed to fit into place. So the day before we were gonna leave for the trip, I had a show. I called Lisa around 5.30. She didn't pick up. I thought it was weird because I didn't hear from her. So a few hours later, her husband called me and told me that Lisa was in an accident. And she was actually, she was driving home and she was killed by a drunk driver. And the most ironic thing about that was that she was like, so, she was so against drunk driving. In college, she started, and in high school, uh, she started, you know, a don't drink and drive um, organizations. And so it's just really awful and ironic. And I had never experienced anything like that before in my life. Just to have, like, you're afraid to stay up and you're afraid to go to sleep and you're just, it's just bizarre. And like, we we're supposed to go away the next day. It was just, the whole thing was just so creepy. And that summer, um, and luckily I was friends with her family and, and we all sort of stayed together and healed together. But that summer, uh, I was back in Pennsylvania by our college and I said uh, to my our other roommate, Heather, I'm like, we should go for a walk around campus and nobody's gonna be on campus. It'll be kind of cool just to see what it's like. So we walked around campus and it was just a construction, you know, just construction workers there like fixing the houses. We see the house that we lived in and the door was open, the front door was open. We're like, that is so weird, but let's go in. So we go in <laughs> and <laughs> my naughty year, no, I'm kidding. That's like the worst thing that I ever did. I'm like, I went in the house. And then we walked up the stairs and all the dorm rooms were locked, except of course for our room and the crazy I can tell you this story because someone else was with me like it so it's like okay she was there I wasn't hallucinating so our door was open I walk in we walk in 
And the room is set up exactly how it was when we walked in on freshman year. It's like our beds were the same way, our desks were the same way, and it was like, oh, we had this kind of like eerie feeling. So we stood in the middle of the room and we said a little prayer. We were like, Lisa, if you're here, please send us a little sign. And, but like not too much, you know when you do that, you're like, give me a sign, but nothing that's gonna scare me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so before we leave, I go around to her desk. And again, there's nothing there. There's like, it's just a desk. And sitting on her desk is a brown paper bag that I've since uh, pasted that says, don't drink and drive. And I pasted it to this paper, but it was just like a brown bag from a liquor store. And I was just like, oh my God. Like, and surprisingly, it made me feel really good. Like it made me feel like, wow, like she's, here she's like connecting to me um so i i kept that with me and i thought that was like really cool so the other story okay <laughs> listen to this this one is a little more lighthearted. so i have always been a fan of john ritter i mean come on he just the way jack Tri the way he played jack tripper and like fell over a couch okay <laughs> why i wanted to be an actor uh so amazing um, like most people are like Shakespeare. I'm like Three's Company, <laughs> um, and I was just like, oh, I was so in awe of him. And he was like the kind of person that I'm like, I really want to meet. Even you know, I don't know. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to meet him and work with him. So when he passed away, I felt like sad, and that's the weirdest thing when someone you don't know, but you have these feelings, but you don't know why. It's just like really weird. And um, so I did all this research and I kept reading all these articles about him and everything. And I was living on 53rd Street and 8th, um, off a room in my manager's office. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was a real sweet time in my life. Anyway, uh, this little room. And I bent down next to my bed and I said a little prayer and I was like, John, I was like, from this point on, I'm gonna dedicate every performance I ever do to you. Send me a sign. <laughs> no. And Suzanne Summers, well, no. But so, <laughs> so I, crazy things started to happen though. I, my friend was trying to make me feel better. Like, I don't know, I had a bad audition or something. And she's like, let's go see a Broadway show, off Broadway show, which isn't gonna make anyone feel better. But, so we go to this Broadway show, sit through this. And Joyce DeWitt, is filling in for the person who was supposed to be there. She played Janet on Three's Company, in case nobody knows. Yeah, I mean, come on. And like, I was just like, oh my God. And then I get an email for an improv class that there was one seat left and the teacher was Richard Kind, who was Larry. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to take the class because, you know, but still, like how amazing. <laughs> so then, around the same time, I go to the San Gennaro Festival, which is the festival in Little Italy. And, and I'm Italian, so those are my people. No, I'm kidding, I, I don't know. I just went and, um, to get a t-shirt, but I'm like, I'm Italian. No, okay, uh, so I go and I play the dart game and I go like this with the dart and I pop a balloon and the guy behind the counter says, okay, you can get anything you want. You can get the pink bears or you can get the blue bears. And I'm telling you, is God is my judge. There were pink bears and blue bears, and that's it. So I said, I mean, I didn't really want any of them. You know how you throw them out the next day. But I'm like, well, I'll take the pink bear. And he says to me, no, you don't want that. You want this. And he reaches underneath, and he pulls out a red dog. Well, I find out John Ritter was the voice of Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> I mean, come on. He was talking to me. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> OK. Um, <laughs> I mean, really, which I since lost in the move, but that's, that's another thing. That would have been so much better, right? And if I was like, and here it is, but okay, long story longer. Okay, finally, I'm sorry, have I been up, I'm like doing a solo show. Um, <laughs> finally, <laughs> I'm like, when I was six, no. Okay, so two years ago, my dad passed away. And I know, it's like all this stuff, but you know, it's like, it's, it's so like, painful at the same time like I feel like I had such wonderful memories and we were such a tight-knit family that it's almost like like you feel like nothing was left unsaid and like we spent a lot of time together it wasn't like I had regrets or anything like it was it was, it was beautiful it was 
awful and beautiful at the same time. So I, right after he passed away, I kept saying, like, God, I really want to get a sign from him. You know, like, not a, he didn't do voices, so Clifford was out of the picture, but something. <laughs> just send me something. So I had a dream about my dad. And this was one of those dreams that stayed with me, like, so much. He always dressed really well. A beautiful suit, always looked clean and everything. He was on the beach, walking on the beach, and he looked exactly like that. He was in a suit, and he smelled the way he smelled. And it was just, like, so great. And he handed me something, because I said, Dad, you know, we're all having a really hard time. Like, can you give me a sign? So he handed me a necklace. And I remember this necklace. It was a copper necklace, and it was flat. And it was like a religious uh, necklace, but it was, like, it was like flat. I remember feeling that. So I got up, and that dream stayed with me. And, and it made me feel so good. And I was like, oh, it's so great. And then a couple weeks later, I go home, and my mom said, there's some mail for you. And my dad used to give to charities. The one saint that my dad loved, because we were Italian, so there's saints all over our house. <laughs> the one saint my dad gave to is this saint called Padre Pio. My dad was a big believer in him. Well, we get something from the Padre Pio Society, but it's addressed to me. And I'm like, that's so crazy. And I open it up, and inside is a copper necklace with Padre Pio. And as you can see, it's like flat on the side. And it was, it was one of those things where I was just like, oh my, like I almost fell back. Like I wasn't that dramatic, but like I did almost <laughs> like fall back. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. She's bad shit crazy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and I swear, if I would have gone to, a, if I go to a psychiatrist and tell them, you know what they would say? They would say, wow, that Clifford the Red Dog is for real. <laughs> no. But <laughs> um, what I'm saying is that at, the, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter whether this is just in my imagination, whether this happened. It really, it's, it's how I feel. And when we see signs, if I see a sign of free pizza or no parking or casting this way, they help us get along, get along through our life. So I encourage you, if you see a sign, stop, drop, and roll. Take it, and maybe it'll help you in your travels through life. Thank you so much.